Precision Agriculture aims to optimise field management by matching farming practices more closely to crop needs. It also aims to reduce environmental risks and increase competitiveness through more efficient practices such as improved management of fertilisers and other inputs. Through the use of information technology such as satellite navigation and crop sensing systems, growers can observe, measure and respond to a range of crop variability issues. The use of GPS guidance systems in vegetable production has increased significantly in recent years. This adoption of satellite guidance is now providing the foundation for a move towards other aspects of precision agriculture, such as variable rate application and crop sensing. Ed Windley and Ben Moore are vegetable producers at Kalbar, which is located within the Fassaverne Valley in southeast Queensland. Ed and Ben are both using GPS guidance and controlled traffic on their farms and they're now in the process of implementing variable rate application systems. Ed and his wife Genevieve have more than 100 hectares under vegetable production. They grow a range of crops including sweet corn, green beans, carrots and onions. Over the last five years, Ed has used imagery to identify variation within crops on his farm. We moved here in 2005 and um, it was quite a, we had a couple of dry years in a row then and um, so we had no issues with drainage, it was more a lack of moisture than an excess of moisture and so when things started to get wetter in sort of 2007 8 some of the imagery highlighted areas that I, I probably knew were there but it put them in a, quite a visual form and so we did a lot of drainage work as a result of that with laser levelling and drains. We also felt we needed to go to growing on hills or beds to do the hilling efficiently and effectively. We really needed to go to GPS. As a part of that, it seemed sensible to try and integrate the control traffic. Ben Moore is also seeing the benefits of using GPS guidance for a range of operations on his farm. Our main reason to buy it um, was to manage uh, operator fatigue um, and get the most most rows out of an acre that we can and also to, to um, so that we're spraying true true areas true hectares and our planting rates are right and correct to save money and get the efficiency like that. Implementing controlled traffic has not been without its challenges however in Ed's case the changes he has made to his equipment and processes have been more than worthwhile standardising the, the, both the equipment and the tractor wheel spacings was the, the main one that we had to sort out sort of straight away. We were close but it wasn't perfect. The hilling and the, and the control traffic was the catalyst to bring all of that together. It has worked out wonderfully well since then and um, yeah, you wonder why you persisted for so long <laughs> the other way. An ongoing issue for growers such as Ed, who use contract harvesters, is compatibility with harvesting machinery and in particular, dealing with different wheel spacings. The, the weakest link in the whole control traffic system um, from our perspective is the harvesters at the moment and they're, how they're not as compatible as we'd like with uh, the rest of the growing system. And Because we use um, effectively contract harvesters to, to harvest all of the crops that we grow, it's the goal, I suppose, is to try and have a growing and harvesting system that fits together nicely and is robust enough across a range of weather conditions that you're inevitably faced with. With assistance from the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry, Queensland, Ed and Ben are trialling a variable rate spreader. This allows them to tailor their fertiliser applications to meet the precise nutrient requirements of their farming system. Ed's knowledge and experience, combined with crop imagery, has shown that significant variation in crop performance occurs across his farm. He sees managing variability as an important step to achieving improved crop uniformity. From my perspective, um, uniformity of the crop is, is of great value. I suppose as a result of some of the manual variable rate spreading that we've done um, over the course of the last couple of years, in terms of you know, seeing crop that's not performing and going and applying variable rates of fertiliser on it, very, very visual and subjective and manually, the response has been um, uh, plenty good enough that, that um, I think that the, that the process will, will be very effective. The variable rate spreader that Ed is trialling 
works in conjunction with his GPS guidance system to deliver a precise quantity of fertiliser or soil additives such as lime based on predefined soil and crop zones. Basically the, the spreader um, it has Y cells that are built into the machine and, um, and the, the controller for the spreader um, receives a GPS signal from the, the receiver on top of the tractor so it knows how fast it's going and where it is in a paddock and, and how much fertiliser is being, um, being applied for the area, for the defined area that you've, you've set. When it comes time to, to do a variable rate appli application, you'll create defined zones in a computer software program and that's then imported into the controller with a USB stick. The control unit then um, varies the, the rate of fertiliser that's applying at any particular point um, in the paddock based on the predefined zones. The ability of the machine to apply an accurate rate of, of fertiliser because of the way cells and the GPS um, speed is, has so far been very, very pleasing. Um, we can travel whatever speed we basically want to and it's putting out a well-defined rate of fertiliser in a uniform manner. It's been yeah, spectacular so far. The use of crop sensing imagery is an important part of developing specific management zones. As part of the trial, Ed and Ben will be using a green seeker mapping system to identify variability long before it can be visually detected in a crop. Imagery in, in whatever form that is in satellite or green seeker or um, gives you a, an opportunity to clearly define those areas so that you can pre-plan to um, to solve you know, any issue that you expect to have happen in the, in the crop that you're about to grow. Introducing application maps with clearly defined borders um, that are repeatable um, is, you know, is it's the next step, I suppose. If we are able to uh, find those areas before planning and maintain the uniformity across our crop, that, that will increase the yield and um, result in, in more profit margin per hectare of what we're, what we're farming. I guess we want to get the most out of every acre that we're cropping and if we're able to go through with a green seeker in another operation um, and pick up a deficiency or a problem in that crop before it's visible to our eye, that's going to make, our, make us money. Precision agriculture and specifically technologies such as controlled traffic, crop sensing and variable rate application provide powerful tools for helping growers to get the most out of their production systems. Once you put all the bits together, control traffic and variable rate and your drainage and everything else, um, it, it gives you the, um, the opportunity to build a more resilient system. Our yields are definitely far more stable and at a higher level to where they were you know, five years ago and that's really pleasing. In terms of the variable rate, it gives you the opportunity to be very objective about um, how and when you're applying nutrition to those areas that aren't performing and, and being more proactive about it rather than trying to salvage a poor area that, um, you know, when the damage has been done to, yeah, getting more on the front foot and being more proactive about it rather than playing catch up.